Anyway, church, um, I am not preaching for you this morning because I need to rest my voice. Amen. <laughs> um, I've been talking all yesterday. Uh, I shouldn't have been. I woke up this morning. I'm probably really bad still. Um, I shouldn't be talking now. <laughs> but um, I have a very good friend, and uh, he's at the moment pastoring in Belfast. But um, I, I collared him in, uh, in church the other, uh, just the other day. I said, what are you, when are you going back to Belfast? He says, I'm going back Tuesday. And I said, okay, do you want to preach for me? Because <laughs> I can't preach. And, um, and so we were in for a treat this morning. Um, uh, Pastor Adam Claxton is here with us to take both the services Sunday morning and evening. And he's accompanied by his wife, Shantella, as well. Amen. And, um, and um, we thank him for coming. Um, and so uh, he was first pastor in Southampton. What year was he? 2017, he was pastor in Southampton. And so, and then, uh, and so I mean, it's been about six, six, seven years now of him being in the ministry. He then took over, he then uh, was uh, the assistant pastor in the Norwich Church, um, which is our, you know, our grandmother church. And now he's taken over the work in Belfast. Um, and God has been moving powerfully, using it powerfully, amen, um, and uh, he's a good friend of mine, um, and uh, we just want to give him a warsaw welcome as he comes to preach for us, amen. So let's give him a big hand as he comes. Amen. I was telling my wife this morning, um, just as Pastor Wes is talking about dreams, um, I'm glad I don't have those kind of dreams because I had a dream last night that all my teeth fell out. And I woke up in the morning thinking they're all still there, so we're, we're okay. But yeah, and I don't have those kind of dreams. So, but you join that fast, I and mean, that's going to be a great time. I mean, I appreciate you coming out this morning, and thank you, Pastor Wes, for the invitation. We're going to uh, talk about some topics this morning. I want you to open your hearts. Uh, because what we're going to speak about doesn't really get spoken about too much. Uh, and so I'm believing God today uh, to help us. I am believing God to move. And what I'm going to believe God for today, uh, amen, is, is I mean, just that God helps us through the word of God. Uh, and then tonight we're going to pray for the sick. We're going to pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We're going to have fun tonight. And so you come out tonight. Uh, you bring people, bring people. If you're working with new converts, tell them to come tonight. Uh, it's going to be a great service. We're going to believe God because uh, God is a healer. Amen. God is able to do these things. Uh, uh, God is a miracle worker. Uh, so let's turn our Bibles today to John 18. Uh, we're going to begin at verse 28. Uh, John 18, verse 28. Cam, did you drink from this? No. No, great. Okay, we don't want to be sharing water bottles. <laughs> Your teeth might fall out. <laughs> CBN News. They covered a story uh, a few weeks ago, and it was a school class. <clears throat> Here in England, uh, there was a debate going on which sparked the interest of, uh, of the news, and the lesson was on life education in this and in this school, wasn't um, a high school or anything, kind of like a middle school. Life education in which the students were told they can be who they want to be and you can identify how you want to identify. One student said that she wanted to identify as a cat. <clears throat> Another student was then asked, or then ask the question, well, how can you identify as a cat if you're a girl? Common sense, right? You don't walk on all fours, you don't eat from a bowl, you don't, you know. Maybe that's just me today, but uh, amen. I don't think people do that. This student was cut down by the teacher. How dare you? You've just upset someone by questioning their identity, the pupil's response, well, if they want to identify as a cat uh, or something, then they are generally unwell. It's crazy. The teacher went on to say, Why, where did you get this idea that there are only two genders? Adding, it is not an opinion, 
Gender is not linked to parts that you were born with. Gender is about how you identify. The teacher said, if you don't like it, you need to go to a different school. Adding, I'm reporting you to senior staff. You need to have a proper educational conversation about equality, diversity, and inclusion because I'm not having that expressed in my lessons. Now, I think someone is confused in this debate, and I don't think it's the teacher. I don't think it's the student, sorry. <laughs> I think it's the teacher. I mean, I want to preach a sermon called What is Truth? Because what has happened to truth in our generation? So let's read our text today, John 8. And this sermon, listen, isn't to offend anybody. Uh, we are going to search for truth in the word of God. So let's read John 8, verse 37, and we're going to reference the story as we go, beginning at verse, John 18, verse 37. Sorry, you have to excuse me, because I got here at 1.30 in the morning, so uh, amen. Uh, let's read from verse 37. Pilate therefore said to him, are you the king then, Jesus said, you say rightly that I am a king for this cause I was born, for this cause I have come to the world that I should bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth, hears my word, Pilate said, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no fault in him at all. What is truth? Let's consider firstly the search is on. <clears throat> in our text, we see there is a search taking place. So we come to the trial of Jesus Christ. Over the previous three years, uh, he has uh, been, he's entered into his ministry. Jesus has been ministering truth uh, to people. He has called out false religion. He has professed himself equal to God, uh, able to forgive sins. He has stood up against uh, generational trends. He was speaking truth everywhere he went. And what was happening there, uh, people were being set free. However, there were people who got very offended uh, by what he was saying. So much so, they wanted to silence him. Here in our text, that uh, Jesus has been brought to Pilate. Verse 28, then they led Jesus to, from Caiaphas to uh, the Praetorium. Pilate here is now looking for the truth in this trial. The religious leaders are saying things there, and, and Pilate has to navigate to find out what is true. Verse 29, Pilate then went out and said to them, what accusation do you bring against this man? There's a back and forth between Pilate and Jesus. Um, all the time, Pilate is searching for the truth uh, in this trial. He asked Jesus, are you? the king of the Jews. Jesus answered, verse 36 and 37, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight so that I should not be delivered to the Jews, but my kingdom is not from here. And Pilate therefore said, are you a kingdom? Pilate is trying to sort things out. He's trying to see what is truth, what is not truth. He's searching for something. Before telling the people he find no fault, finds no fault with Jesus, um, he makes this statement in verse 38. Pilate said, well, what is truth? Pilate is looking and searching for the truth in this trial. The problem is he has to distinguish from what people are saying. He has the Pharisees. He has Jesus in front of him. He has a... The, the, the people of the Jewish people all telling him something different. We see the same today that many angles of people saying uh, what the truth is and people are searching. Uh, and we have to navigate the minefield of people's relative truth. See, we live in a generation where people have distorted the truth. People no longer want to acknowledge it or they no longer want to search or look for it. Uh, Matt Walsh, he released a documentary, you may have seen it a few years ago, um, called What is a Woman? 
He went to answer this one question. He spoke to doctors. He spoke to psychologists. He spoke to professors. And they could not give him a, a definitive answer. Because in this politically correct world, you can't say what the truth is. So let's think this morning about some distorted truths. No one wants to say it, so we're saying it today. We are searching for truth. I want you to get offended because in the search for truth, we have to look at different things. So let's consider firstly the LGBTQ plus movement. Now listen, I'm not homophobic, okay? Everyone can choose what they want to do. If someone comes into my church and they identify as this, I will pray for them. I will sit down with them, have a conversation. We are believing God for people to get saved from these communities. Right? We are believing God. We live in a world where there has been a push to distort the truth. So it's okay to sleep with the same sex. And there are no consequences for that. Children are being educated now that there are hundreds of genders and ways to identify. That if you are one gender but identify as something else, then hey, that's fine. If you want to be a cat today, then sure, you be a cat. An article said teachers at a Scottish secondary school are being ordered not to tell parents about their children's new gender identity if the child does not want them to. We thank God that has now been looked at and changed. This generation as it is being told that they can change their gender, that you can have uh, an, an operation, you can take certain medication and everything will be okay. Uh? No, it won't. Um, things that are done today are irreversible. If a man identifies their woman, and sure, he can go and use the ladies' changing room and the ladies' toilet. Want to identify as he, she, them, cis, zim, ver, vis, you know, all these as a cat, gender fluid. Today I feel like this, but tomorrow I'm, I feel this way. Um, you know, what is happening is children and young teenagers are being uh, mutilated. Why? Because people will not stand up for truth. If you don't say anything, or if you do say something, sorry, you get cancelled, people get offended, people lose their jobs, all because people want to silence the truth. Number two, we have the distortion of scripture. Matthew 24, 11 says that many false prophets will rise up and deceive many. See, there are so many people now claiming they know the scriptures. They have the interpretation of God gave me this vision and all these things, claiming that scripture justifies their lifestyle. See, so listen, be very careful where you get your theology from. You're one of these people that says, oh, what does the Bible say? Well, let me go onto YouTube. Just because someone has nice lighting behind them and they sound professional doesn't mean they know what the word of God says. They say it's okay to sleep around. The Bible doesn't teach us about hell. Jesus, when he said to Lazarus, Lazarus come forth because he was dead in the tomb. Actually, what he was saying is, Lazarus, come forth and express yourself how you want to be expressed. Different denominations saying that it's okay to fornicate, to sleep around, to have homos be a homosexual, all these different things, but you can still make heaven your home. People misquoting scripture. Well, Jesus drank wine. So why can't we? There's no rapture in the Bible. The Bible is just a storybook that I read to kids. There has been a distortion of scripture. And the sad reality, church, is there are people on the way to hell because they are being fooled to believe that the Bible says things it doesn't. Yeah. Number three, people are fed the lie. Well, it's my body, I'll do what I want. We have the abortions right campaign that they campaign for the right for women to have an abortion. An article said the abortions right campaign annually or annuals march for choices 
normally held at a global day of action for safe and legal access to abortion. There was a lady uh, a couple of years ago, I believe, who was silently praying outside an abortion clinic, uh, not speaking to anyone as they went in. She was just praying. She got arrested. Because, and they, well, you can't pray outside this clinic because it's people's choice and you're not allowed to influence that. And hey, sure, it's your choice, right? Everyone has a right to make their own decision. What about the child's choice? See, it's a lie that it's just a fetus, that it cannot feel, that it has no life. Uh, we are told today the reason for abortions is due to many health complications of why that is true in some Areas I was reading articles said an overwhelming majority of abortions performed today involve women who simply do not want to have a baby. Just two percent of abortions are for the reason of rape, incest, or a mother's life is at risk. Two percent. See, what isn't told is the trauma, is the regret that ladies go through <laughs> after the procedure. I know people who they say they've had an abortion and they say the guilt and the shame and the regret they feel uh, is unbelievable. But if you want to get pregnant and then terminate, hey, well, that's your choice. You make this your life. You do whatever you want with your body. But is it? See, this shouldn't surprise any of us today, church, because people are not wanting to hear the truth. And as a result, they will not hear the truth and things will only get worse. Second Thessalonians 2, 10 to 11. And with all righteous, unrighteous deception among those who perish because they do not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, because they did not accept the truth, God will send them strong delusions that they should believe the lie. Jesus teaches us in the word of God that what is happening is a sign of the end times. Matthew 24, 10 and 12. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, will hate one another. And because lawlessness will abound, that the love of many will grow cold. Lawlessness, this is a transgression of the law. People will get offended and will begin to hate one another. That if you say anything about what we've mentioned today, maybe some of you here are getting slightly offended by what I'm saying. Huh? But if you said these things in the world, you're old fashioned, you're a bigot and you're all hated. Isaiah 59, 14, what is right and fair is turned back. What is right and good stands far away. Truth has fallen in the street uh, and what is right cannot come in. There are people who dare not speak about what we are talking about today. Um, maybe even today you are fearful uh, about talking about these subjects. Someone asks you a question on the streets uh, and you divert and you talk around it and you don't speak about it. You accept what the world says as true. People get offended, but in the search for truth, something has to be exposed and things have to be said. See, the problem we face today is that the truth has become relative to the individual. So where is the foundation of truth? Because if my truth is different to your truth, and your truth is different to someone else's truth, then what is truth? I heard a story. A lady accused her husband of being gay because he hadn't cheated on her. <laughs> So let's consider then looking at the source. In our text, Pilate goes to Jesus. Verse 33, then Pilate entered the praetorium again, called Jesus and said, are you the king of the Jews? From speaking to the source, he found out the truth. Verse 38, Pilate said to him, what is truth? And when he said this, he went out again to the Jews and said to him, I find no fault with him. This is an innocent man. He deserves no punishment. John 19, 12, from then, then on, uh, Pilate sought to release him. Pilate now finds himself in a hard place. He knows the truth. 
Jesus is innocent, but he has the crowds. They want him to do something. There is pressure to distort the truth, to appease people. On one hand, if he releases Jesus, he is, he'll be shunned and a weak leader. But if he crucifies him, he'll be accepting them. So nowadays we see many people in this hard position. Either you stand up for truth and face the consequences, or we buckle under the pressure to appease other people. And what is happening is people are, are appeased, uh, they appease the minority because they are the loudest. Pilate does something very interesting in our text. Matthew 27, we'll go to that version, uh, Matthew's account, verse 24, he took water, washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, you see to it takes no responsibility of what is taking place. Why? Because he knows what is true. As Christians, we cannot buckle under pressure of this generation. Well, I'm not saying, listen, please don't get me wrong here. I'm not saying we go shout from the rooftop and we go and offend people. We are sensitive. We use wisdom. We pray and we believe God. Um, what I'm saying is that we have a Christian obligation to stand up for truth, to teach our children what is true from Scripture. That when the time comes, we protect the standards and values of our church. People say to me, are you going to brainwash your kids with Scripture? Absolutely. Because if I don't, the world will brainwash them with something else. See, we cannot wash our hands of the truth. The longer time goes, the harder it will be to uphold what is true. There is a pressure to distort, to appease other people. People have been sacked. There's been disciplinaries. Why? Because they stood up for what they believe is true. And slowly but surely, this generation is trying to crucify the truth. So let's go to the source today. What does the Bible say? What is true? Firstly, the truth is... The word of God. You cannot believe part of the word of God and not other parts. You think, oh, that part's irrelevant. But that part, yeah, I like that bit. Uh, you either believe it all or you believe none of it. Either it's the inspired word of God or it isn't. So what does the Bible say about what we've spoken about? LGBTQ+, plus, and we'll put the whole thing into the category. Generation Genesis, Genesis 2, 22 to 24, then the Lord made... Woman from the rib taken out of man, and he brought her to the man and said, This is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. She is taken out of man. <clears throat> that is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife. They become one flesh, man and woman. That's it. No gender fluidity. Uh, fluidity, no gender neutral, man and woman are joined together. Leviticus 18, 22, you shall not lie intimately with a man as one lies with a female. It is repulsive. The truth is that humanity is not designed to have same-sex relationships. When this core value gets trodden down, be very careful. We go to the New Testament, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 to 10. Do not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, um, nor thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners will, in, will not inherit uh, the kingdom of God. It categorizes sin, LGBTQ, plus same sex marriage, whatever is the same as any other sin. It will take you to hell. But Jesus Christ came to save sinners alike. He died for all sinners. He died for you and me included, uh, that we can repent of our sin and have uh, everlasting life. There's a man by the name of David uh, Bennett. He uh, wrote, has written a book in his uh, called War of Loves of Loves. As a young man, he describes as a gay young man, uh, 
he saw Christianity as the enemy to freedom for his LGBTQ plus people. And his early experiences uh, with Christianity and all these different things that led him to become a gay activist. But when Jesus Christ came into his life, in a highly unexpected way, he says, he laid down, he, he was led down a path he never predicted or imagined. He is now a believer of Jesus Christ, saved, delivered, and set free. That is our prayer because listen, Jesus Christ can change any heart of any person that saves us all from our sins. Then we have the distortion of scripture. Jesus tells us that in the last days, false teachers will come preaching a false Jesus. Uh, the Bible warns us, 2 Timothy 4, 3, for the time will come, they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap upon them teachers for themselves. People will not want to follow truth. They will, they, you know, this is why we, we need to know what the word of God says, uh, so we can stand firm in the truth of scripture. The Bible is the inspired word of God, um, and it should be interpreted as it is meant to be. Revelation tw uh, 22, 6, John's uh, revelation here. These words are faithful and true. Verse 18 and 19, for I testify to you, anyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds, these th adds to these things, God will add to him. Plagues that are written in this book, if anyone takes anything away the uh, from the words of this book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part in the book of life. The Bible is the word of God. It is the truth there, the inspired word of God. It's my body, I'll do what I want. But actually, let's read some scriptures here. First Corinthians 6, 19. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, whom you have from God <coughs> with our bodies? See, the Bible is pro-life. Life begins at conception. We have no right to take a life because it's in the hand of God. The Bible says you shall not murder. God has formed you in your mother's womb. The book of Exodus says um, if a man fights and hurts a woman with child uh, so that she gives birth prematurely, yet no harm follows, he shall surely be punished according uh, Accordingly, as the woman's husband imposes on him, uh, and he shall pay the judge uh, as the judge determines. But if harm follows, then you shall give life life. This shows us that God sees um, an unborn child just as he sees a grown um, adult. Life is God's. Our bodies are brought with a price of the precious blood of Jesus Christ. So what is truth? To everything we face in life, to what we've spoken about and many other issues, the truth is the word of God. So let's think about living in truth very quickly. In our text, Jesus makes a statement. Verse 37, Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am the king. For this cause I was born, for this cause I have come into this world, that I should bear witness of the truth. Everyone who is of the truth is my voice. You and I are to bear witness of the truth, that we are not to make the truth what we want or what we think it should be. Yeah? We are to stand in the truth of the word of God. Those who stand in the truth, Jesus says, hears his voice. Why? Because Christ traffics in truth. If we do not stand in truth um, or seek after truth, it's very hard to hear the voice of our Savior. See, ultimately, the truth will triumph. Everything that Jesus said came to pass. Everything Jesus predicted, the prophecies have and will come to pass. People realized this guy is true. Hanging on the cross. Soldiers who crucified him. See, this is the Son of God. See, today people are desperate for truth. Sure, people will, might mock it, some might banish it. There are people who are confused. There are people, listen, young kids, and it breaks my heart. 
young kids, young adults who are confused about what the truth is. They think the world speaks the truth because that's all they hear. Many are searching, are seeking, are lost. Many are asking the question that Pilate asked. What is truth? They are waiting for someone to tell them the truth. So we have the truth of scripture. John 8, 32. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. No matter where you find yourself in life, no matter where people are in life, uh, the word of God that has the truth um, it contains the words of eternal life that you and I are to share, not offend, not be, you know, not be unwise, but we are to use wisdom to pray and believe God, to share the gospel, the truth of the word of God uh, with those who are searching, who are broken, who are desperate for us. Because when people know the truth, it will set them free. So as we bring this to a close today, church, we are called to live by truth. Many people get offended if you speak the truth, but that's the price of truth because it exposes lies. It exposes falsities and it exposes sin. See, we love people. We care for people. We hate the sin, but we love the sinner. However, that does not mean that we jeopardize the truth of the word of God. So I ask you the question again. What is truth? Because truth cannot be what we think. Or what society thinks. Truth must be what the Bible says. Must be the word of God. The truth is found in the living words of Jesus Christ. That's what we stand for. As Christians. And let's have every head bowed and every eye closed today. <clears throat> and maybe today you are not saved, not right with God. You've been told lots of different things about God, about Christianity. <clears throat> but you're not saved, never experienced salvation and love of God. But today, you want to get right with God. Anyone at all, you want to get saved right with God. You lift up your hand there. Someone will pray for you. Someone will lead you for a prayer of salvation. Maybe you're backslidden in your heart. Maybe you're going away from God. Listen, just because you come to church doesn't make you right with God. There are people that have been in church for years. I was going to church for years, but I wasn't right with God. I was living in sin. I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. But I would be in church. I would be there on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday. But I wasn't right with God. To confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, you shall be saved. Anyone at all, back said not right with God, you lift up your hand, get saved, get right with God today, a fresh uh, start for you. Anyone at all? Amen. Church, I believe God that all Christians here, all believing what the word of God says, in this generation where it's getting harder and harder to stand up for truth, Today at this altar, you would ask God to give you the boldness, to give you the wisdom to stand up for what is true. As you see a whole generation getting lied to, you say, God, give me wisdom. Help me to reach these people with the word of God because the truth shall set you free. That it can be fearful. It can be you're unsure how things are going to work out. I understand all the dynamics, but as Christians, we are not to jeopardize what the Word of God says. If somebody asks me in the street, well, what does the Word God, what does the Bible say about these issues? I will tell them. Because I believe the truth of the Word of God is the inspired words of God. Maybe today, church, you're in a situation where you've almost 
jeopardize the truth. <clears throat> Someone asks you a question, you skirt around the issue. And it's all today you would pray, God, help me to stand up for truth. And as I do, people will respond. People will get saved. Their lives will be changed and transformed because you, as a Christian, stand up for the word of God. If I am lifted up from the earth, Jesus says, I will draw men unto me. You lift up the truth. You trust God to do the rest. Why don't we stand across this place today, church? God has spoke to you. God has dealt with you. Uh, and let's stand.